We've seen countless movies, TV shows, video games, and of course, real life claims that aliens or extraterrestrial life does in fact exist. There was even a song way back by a band led by a rock star turned alien hunter, appropriately titled Aliens Exist. The song is by Blink-182, it's a banger, but looking back, I guess Tom was seriously trying to tell us something. Either way, for decades, the question or idea of intelligent life forms, aside from us existing in our universe, has been debated. There was the Roswell incident back in 47, and quite recently, the Pentagon even admitted to forming a task force to investigate UFOs after spotting one in April. And now there have been claims of potential intelligent life forms on Venus, the neighboring country to Earth. After astronomers learned of a chemical floating in the planet's atmosphere, the scientific community and the rest of the world are now eagerly awaiting how things play out as we're all sitting here wondering, is there life on Venus? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host Jared Bronstein and today we're talking about potential life on Venus. Pretty cool if you ask me. Not necessarily intelligent life, just life. But let's just go with the, you know, let's just go with this idea that's intelligent just because uh, it's fun. As always, make sure you guys stick around to the end of this one for some comment replies from another video. But for now, let's just get right into things. So what exactly was found on or around Venus that is leading people all over the world to believe there is potential life on the planet with an average temperature of 800 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit? It's a gas. What do you think I was going to say? Like a fossil? A corpse? Anything that has gone remotely near the planet is disintegrated before it touches down. So the only thing that would be able to survive the planet's atmosphere would be a gas. You guys think the desert in the summer is hot? Imagine that multiplied by 10 and you're still not as hot as Venus could potentially be. So it's not like a camera picked up on houses and the entire planet being colonized, but the fact that this gas was even found in the clouds of Venus is a very strong indication that there may be forms of life on the planet, or we're going to learn something about the gas planet or its atmosphere in general that we didn't previously know. Either way, this discovery is considered a win because we're going to learn something new, one way or the other. So what was the gas that they found? It's called phosphine, and on Earth, it's a toxic gas that is produced by microorganisms. On Earth, it's normally found in swamps and marshlands, but is also known to exist in some animals' guts and can also be found in their poop. Regardless of where it's found, one thing is for sure, this gas is a sign of some sort of life on our planet. So to no surprise, considering how it's been found in some of the clouds of Venus, professionals are looking for answers. And it's not like these astronomers are claiming that the gas being present is evidence that there is definitely life on Venus. Instead, they've just eliminated every possible option or reason the gas would be in the planet's atmosphere, and the only logical explanation left is that there is potential life. Clara Sousa Silva, a molecular astrophysicist at MIT, explained, that's why this is such an extraordinary detection, because it has to come from something completely unexpected. At some point, you're left with not being able to explain it. Except we do know of a strange way of making phosphine on terrestrial planets and that is life. Now, as exciting as all this is, as I mentioned before, any type of equipment used to investigate what's going on will eventually just disintegrate as the planet's temperatures are hellish hot. The area where this gas has been discovered up in the clouds isn't nearly as hot as the planet's land, but still no one is too sure how or why the gas is being formed and replenishing itself. On Earth, phosphine is only found in environments with no oxygen, like a sewer. To form the gas, you need a phosphorus atom and three hydrogen atoms, but given the lack of hydrogen on Venus, this discovery is really stumping some of the world's top professionals. Jane Greaves, the lead study author and a professor at Cardiff University explained, there's really very little hydrogen available in the atmosphere, so we think something is making it. And one of the possibilities is, it's small floating organisms. David Grinspoon, who is a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute, explained that although previously thought to be impossible, some organisms can live in harsh conditions, such as the highly acidic and inhospitable clouds found on Venus. These organisms are called extremophiles. Grinspoon explained, we found that there are indeed what we call acidophilic organisms, organisms that love to live in strong acid, and we don't even know the limit of how acidic an environment life can thrive in. Speaking on the findings, he said, it's a wonderful finding. Of course, one needs to exercise the right amount of skepticism. It's not enough to say, oh, there could have been a source millions of years ago, and then it's hanging around. No, it doesn't hang around. So there has to be a continuous source. It's like you walk into a house and the bathtub has water in it, but the drain is open. So either the faucet is on or the faucet was just on. And it seems Susan Sousa Silva is reinforcing this claim that something is replenishing the gases. When speaking on how much of the gas was found, which in comparison to Earth was a lot more, she said, that is all very much evidence pushing towards this exotic explanation of something replenishing it and something making it at large quantities. Cue that meme of Alien Hunter just looking off to the side saying, aliens. 
Now this idea of life existing in clouds isn't coming out of nowhere. On Earth, bacteria get swept up into the clouds and at points can travel across countries and even continents. However, as they say, what goes up must come down. And considering how there is a consistent amount of phosphine in the clouds, that means something is constantly replenishing the gas up there, which again, leads to an even stronger possibility there is some form of life on Venus. Currently the hypothesis is that microbes on Venus have very quick reproductive rates, which is how the large quantities of gas are being maintained. As Grinspoon explains, it doesn't really matter if some of them are falling out to their deaths, because they are sort of restocking themselves. Think of it as a pond where people were fishing out of it. If the fish are reproducing fast enough, or it's being restocked or whatever, then it doesn't mean you don't say, oh well, they're gonna run out of fish because it's being fished. No, there's a steady state population, and that's the picture that we potentially have of life in the clouds of Venus. Gotta love those Grinspoon analogies, first the faucet and tub, now fish in the lake. Now given all that we know and all that I've explained, it seems for the most part, scientists, astronomers, and anyone who has anything to do with science and space have come to the conclusion that this discovery ultimately means one of two things. There is a form or forms of life on Venus, although it may not be intelligent life, it's still a form of life, and that's something of interest. There's also the possibility this is a new chemical reaction of sorts, or it's something we currently don't understand or can explain, but with a little more research, eventually, there will be a logical and scientific explanation explaining everything, and that explanation isn't that life is on Venus and thriving. Nick Cowan, who is a professor in physics and earth and planetary science at McGill University explained, we already know that there are weird things going on in Venus's atmosphere, and so the most likely scenario is that this is just weird chemistry happening in Venus's atmosphere, rather than a whole new branch of life in its clouds. Every year we discover all sorts of new, exciting atmospheric science, atmospheric physics, atmospheric chemistry happening in the solar system, and in planets orbiting other stars. And so absolutely, they did do their due diligence and they ruled out everything that we currently know of. So to wrap things up on this one, we can't say for sure whether or not there is life on Venus. We do know the planet is inhospitable, or so we thought, but now it seems maybe there is a way for life to exist on the blistering hot planet's outer atmosphere. However, there are always going to be skeptics, and for every person or scientist who is excited about the potential discovery, you're going to get just as many who are finding the idea of life on Venus next to impossible. Biologist Gerald Joyce told the New York Times, this can hardly be taken as biosignature. Sarah Stewart Johnson, a planetary scientist at Georgetown University said, even if it's no proof of life, there is certainly a reason to be excited about any kind of discovery, especially on another planet so close to ours. There's been a lot of buzz about phosphine as a biosignature gas for exoplanets recently. How cool to find it on Venus. She went on to explain how Venus has been neglected in the scientific community for so long, it's nice that it's finally being investigated and getting the recognition many other notable astronomers have been pushing for. Back in 1967, astronomer Carl Sagan and biologist Harold Morowitz proposed the idea of life on Venus, and ever since, the community has speculated on the idea. But given how tough it is to really explore the planet that will destroy any and all equipment that gets remotely close to it, well as one could imagine, it certainly isn't an easy task to do your due diligence. Sanjay LeMay, a planetary scientist at the University of Wisconsin explained, the idea has been around but nobody had really looked into it seriously until we proposed a life cycle for the bacteria. So clearly this idea that there is potential life on Venus isn't all that new. But even though some professionals had a hunch, no one ever thought there was enough reason to really invest and try to explore the planet. In fact, this discovery was a very pleasant surprise as Greaves explained that while they were doing their research, I quote, I wasn't really expecting that we would detect anything. With the idea that, hypothetically, if an alien were to observe Earth from afar, it'd be able to see phosphine, which could lend truth to the theory that life on Earth does exist, at least as per the alien, she decided to try it on Venus. Considering how Venus is similar in size and mass, odds are the same thing would happen. Using a ground-based telescope in Hawaii, she made the discovery within a few hours, and shortly after, the same observations were made in Chile. And now here we are, with a potential sign of life on Venus. As of now, we can't say for sure, but using the process of elimination, it really does seem like astronomers and a lot of the scientific community in general believe there is some form of life. Does that mean aliens? No, not necessarily. But it is quite possible there are foreign organisms thriving on planets, which we never thought was possible. And who knows what else we'll find in space down the road? Only one way to find out. Keep looking and not limiting our beliefs. Now, as always, friends, let me know your thoughts below. Do you guys think there are other forms of intelligent life or any other kind of life on other planets? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. Top 10 strongest hurricanes in history. The Liam Stir said, I wonder if we'll ever get a Hurricane Karen. That really would top off the year, I think. We just had like a Hurricane Karen just destroy a bunch of states. Not that I'm hoping for it, but that would really just put a cap on this year, eh? Adolfo Cardoza said, do top 10 worst states ever. I think that's very opinion-based, though. Unless we did it based on, like, I don't know, 
homicide rates or, or crime rates. Like, I, I don't know how, how would I, I mean, obviously Florida is like number one, but aside from that, I don't know what other states I could put in there without being biased. Like for me personally, I would probably say Texas is the worst just because they breed Dallas Cowboy fans and th they're just the worst. So Meow Schools 37 said 10 most dangerous man-made mistakes. That's a very interesting one. That would actually be a very cool list. And you know what? I might actually pitch it. So thank you for that. Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching LBQ, and we'll see you in the next video.